not Jesus, but he lives in me. And if Jesus lives in me, and the Holy Spirit lives in me, and I'm a child of God, then as a child of God, I have the power to overcome sin, according to the Bible. According to the Bible. But the problem is this is that a lot of people just like going to church and making themselves feel good, that they call themselves Christians because it's a good and moral thing. They have a mental assent to Jesus because he's the savior. And it's, and it's in America, it's, it's a good thing to say, hey, we're all sinners. Like, like, it's, like it's humility. It's say, you know, Jesus died for my sins. He forgives me. He understands that I'm just a human. But no, folks. Jesus commanded, Jesus commanded, be ye perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Praise God, man. Yeah, yeah. You out here sharing, sharing the words? Uh, you abide in my word. Praise God. You in my oh, word. No, you in my stead. Yeah. I you are a Christian. Even right there. Sometimes, not all the time, but yeah. We're up from Georgia visiting right? visiting and our brother in Christ. So. He lives in Zanesville. Well, our father right. Abraham. Yeah, Praise so. the Lord. Both we're of us Abraham. We're Yeah, yeah. yeah we preach down there in Atlanta, Columbus, different. I have a brother from Atlanta. What's that? I have a brother who lives in Atlanta. Okay. Name's Aaron Jackson. Okay. The works of Abraham were done by faith. Praise God. And what'd you say where your name is again? Brandon. Brandon, it's a Brandon I'm sorry. Just, bro, we've been, we were just, we were preaching, yeah. We were preaching at Ohio State for like five hours in the sun, so I'm kind of like. Oh, yeah. Spirit 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 spirit. Spirit. Uh, yeah, I got some. I, I got some. Yeah, we, we hit the colleges though, in Georgia and Alabama a lot. So, so we want to check out Ohio State. Definitely good. Yeah, Definitely good. Plan, spirit down Bob there. Uh, Nas, you know, it's all these people. I used to listen to all this stuff. Uh, a lot of pride, obviously. Satanic rap. Yeah, yeah, a lot of intellectual they, pride. I used to all this filth. You know, a lot of debating with I atheists and, up, like people you know, origins water. and stuff Couldn't like that. So, but when he yeah, man. Glad to see you, brothers. Ago, praise, praise God, brother. Glad to see you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like out and, and I received yeah. the Holy Spirit. Praise, praise God. God. You might see him again. He's local, so. Praise the Lord. Yeah, that's Brother Tell Keith. Brother, he God changed God. Right, the man. desires of my heart, friend. He changed me. That's what God wants to do to you. He wants to change you, friend. I didn't bring a jacket. But friends, make no mistake right about it. Romans 6.23 says that the wages so. of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I think my tracks were... So notice he says the wages of sin is death. Now what death? Uh, I got you guys some are still anyway. alive. You didn't die. He's speaking of the eternal oh, God, death. Much, look, the yeah. lake of Did fire. Did you notice that Starbucks right there? See, it says in Thessalonians that the Son of Man is going to send out his angels. <laughs> The Lord is going to be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God. That's cool. And on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These he shall punish with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. 
<laughs> That's why God is commanding you to repent. Today is the day of salvation. Friends, as long as you have breath in your lungs, you have a chance. But don't think you're going to get a deathbed conversion. I know somebody that's close to dying right now. And this person still has not repented. Yet they say they believe in God. But they still love their sin. At least last time I, I heard. They could have repented huh? since. Friends, sin hardens the heart. I know what I'm talking about. The Bible says in Hebrews that sin hardens the heart. This message you're hearing today. Okay. If you continue in your sin, your heart can become hard. Because you're resisting right, man. the truth. Lead your children in the That's truth. That's why man. it says in the scriptures, today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Today. As long as you're still breathing and you have breath in your lungs, you Amen. have a chance. Give up your sin, friends. Jesus said you must be born again or you will not oh, so much enter the here, kingdom yeah. of heaven. In layman's term, yeah. you're not going to be in heaven unless you're born what again. What does layman's mean? How do you layman's, become born again? Layman. What that like simple terms? you got to become born again of oh. God's spirit. Layman. Oh, Acts heard, chapter 5 says God gives that. the Holy Spirit to those who obey I, him. I, I heard. Here you go, and here's how you obey him. Repent of your sin. Forsake your sin. And turn to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Did you guys come from Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Friends, the burden of sin is heavy. Now look, there's no cutting around it. Sin feels good to the flesh. No doubt about it. It does. But friends, God can change your desires. That's what he did to me. I, love, I used to love my sin. Couldn't get enough of it. It felt good to the flesh. But when God gave me his spirit, because I repented, the desires of my heart were changed. That's why God says in Ezekiel, get yourself a new spirit and a new heart. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that he should turn and live. Turn and live, friends. 1 John chapter 1, starting in verse 5, says this. This is the message we have heard from Jesus and declare to you Man. that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with God and walk in darkness, which is sin, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have this fellowship is a good spot. with one another. Uh, and this the is a good spot. Jesus Christ is good. cleanses us from all sin. Yeah. Notice in verse 7 there that the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ cleansing you from all your sin. Good news. He's conditioned upon right. you right. walking right. in the good light news. as good Jesus news. is in the light. Good, good, sure good, good news. And 1 John chapter 4 verse 17 says that love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as Jesus is, so are we also in this world. See, you can be just like Jesus, friends, if you turn from your sin and turn in faith to Jesus Christ. And he'll respond to that by giving you the Holy Spirit. Amen. You become born again. And that is the power of God to walk as Christ walks. Romans chapter 2 says, Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering? not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance, but in accordance with your hardness and your unrepentant you heart, give you, money? you are treasuring well, up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous that. judgment yeah. of God, you, you know. who will render to That's each good. one according oh. to his deeds. Oh, Eternal is your life to those who by patience Sorry, continuous brother. in doing good, Other hand. seek for glory, honor, and immortality. <laughs> but for those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul man who does evil yeah. of the jew first and also of the I'll greek meaning the rest of the world but glory honor and peace to those who work what is good of the jew right. first also of the greek good news for there is good no news. partiality with god good news friends there's no partiality with god god is not a respecter of person if i leave this street corner going back to my sin i will see hell if i don't repent God is no respecter of persons. Romans chapter 6, the Apostle Paul shows you that Christians don't sin every single day. 
Well, there's another person convicted. That's a good thing. Now just humble yourself. That's why you yelled out you're convicted. That's a good thing. You're, you're getting closer to the kingdom of God. Now you got to humble yourself, man. But Romans chapter 6 says, What then? Shall we sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God Certainly not. Forbid. How shall we who die to not. sin live any longer in it? Amen. And he goes on later in that chapter and warns the Christians in Rome, Sin will not have dominion over you, for you are not under law but under grace. Sin will not have dominion, rule, and control in your life. You are under grace, the power of God, mm. to live holy. And First Peter says, as yeah. obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former laws, as in your ignorance, but as he who calls you is holy, so you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy, for I am Good holy. Good news. And if you call upon the Father, Good news. without partiality, judges according to each one's work, Conduct yourselves throughout the news, time of your stay here in fear. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Okay, God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Here, can I give you something? Yes. I, I live locally in Ohio. My YouTube's on the back. Thank you. God bless. You want a priest, brother? Yeah, man. He's he's tired, so. Oh, yeah. you're tired, man. I'll go whenever you're ready. Are you, if I'm, you want to preach? Yeah, bro. Yeah, I'm not. I'm good, brother. I'll preach out to you, brother. Okay. Hey, Amen. You cut off? Yeah. Okay. Maybe should we start facing this towards this way now, or keep it that way? Or? Check one two. <laughs> Praise the Lord. amazing the apathy to the word of God I remember the first time I heard the word of God the word of life that was drawing me to the kingdom of God and I recognized that my life was on the way to hell as a wicked fornicator a wicked sinner DJ hip-hop artist drunkard God called me out of darkness into his glorious light and you know what else he did for me which is contrary to a lot of American quote-unquote Christianity he cleansed me from all sin, and he gave me the power to overcome sin. And that's what the Bible promises, that you don't have to be a sinner anymore. And I hear it all the time, every time we go out, we're all sinners. We're born sinners. You can't stop sinning. What are you, Jesus? No, I'm not Jesus, but he lives in me. And if Jesus lives in me, and the Holy Spirit lives in me, and I'm a child of God, that as a child of God, I have the power to overcome sin, according to the Bible. According to the Bible. But the problem is this, is that a lot of people just like going to church and making themselves feel good, that they call themselves Christians because it's a good and moral thing. They have a mental assent to Jesus because he's the Savior. And it's, and it's in America, it's, it's a good thing to say, hey, we're all sinners, like, like it's, like it's humility and say, you know, Jesus died for my sins. He forgives me. He understands that I'm just a human. But no, folks, Jesus commanded, Jesus commanded, be ye perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And so those of you that call yourselves Christians, you have a commandment from Jesus to be holy. Holy means to be separate from sin, to be set apart for the Lord's use. You have surrendered your life completely to Jesus Christ. So if you call yourself a Christian and a sinner at the same time, you are a hypocrite. You're not humble, you're a hypocrite. That's hypocrisy. You can't be a sinner and a Christian at the same time. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's not what Jesus teaches. It says in Galatians 2, this is what Paul wrote. Paul the Apostle, the Apostle Paul, knowing that a man, in, in Galatians 2, starting at verse 16, knowing that a man or a woman is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And you would agree with that, yes. We are justified by faith, through the faith of Jesus Christ. 
most Christians will believe in that. Most Christians will believe that, yes, I can't do anything to save myself. I can't do anything to go into heaven. But see, this is where Christians miss it. Paul goes on to say this. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid, no. You are no longer a sinner. Christ is not the minister of sin. Though you seek to be justified by faith, yet you continue in your sin, then you're in error, according to the scripture. The Bible says, continuing, for if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith, the Son of God. You see, so according to Paul, just in that letter, and there's many other areas I can go, if you believe you're justified by faith, and at the same time call yourself a sinner, and say you sin every day, and you walk in sin, then according to the Apostle Paul, you are not a born-again believer. You're deceived. Because Christ is not the minister of sin. The devil is. 1 John. 1 John says this. And every man that has this hope in himself. What hope? The hope of Jesus Christ. If you have the hope of Jesus Christ inside of you. This is what John writes. Every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Notice, he's not a sinner anymore. In Christ, you're not a sinner anymore. He is pure. Whosoever committeth sin, transgresseth also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. And as Paul wrote, if you're dead to the law and alive in Christ, you are no longer a sinner, according to what he wrote. Whosoever, oh, and ye know that he, Jesus, was manifested, revealed, to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Jesus was manifested, he was revealed, he came to destroy sin, to destroy the works of the devil, the Bible says. And so anybody that's in him, oh, I don't need that, brother. Give it to someone who needs it. Yeah, amen. It's a gospel. Yeah, we got a bunch of those, bro. Yeah, give it to someone that needs the gospel. We're preaching the gospel, bro. We know Jesus. We love Jesus. We walk in holiness. We're not sinners anymore by God's grace. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Okay, verse 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. You see what John wrote there? If you're abiding in Christ like Jesus said to in the, in the, in the book of John, in the gospel according to John, Jesus, Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. You can do nothing apart from me. If you abide in me, you'll bear much fruit to the glory of our Father. But if you do not abide in me, you will wither as a branch and be thrown to the fire. Whosoever abides in him sinneth not. You see that? So Christians who call themselves sinners don't know Jesus. Or they think they know Jesus and they're deceived. Because if Jesus lives in you, you are no longer a sinner. If you're abiding in the Holy Spirit, if you're abiding in Christ, God calls us to holiness. Whosoever, whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. Don't be deceived. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. And he that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. They're not walking in sin anymore. If you're born of God. In this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not right, is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So John is making a distinction between the children of God and the children of the devil. And Jesus said, ye shall know them by their fruit. What is coming out of your life? What is coming out of your heart, out of your mouth, out of which the heart speaks? 
it, are, is it holiness? Is it pureness? Or is it cursing? What's the fruit of your life? Is it sin? Is it fornication? Is it homosexuality? Is it thieving? Is it cursing? Is it drunking? Drunkenness? Getting drunk? Getting high? Smoking cigarettes? Are these things in your life and yet you call yourself a believer? Are you a blasphemer? Are you an idolater believing in other gods or approving those that believe in other gods? Saying, oh, you know, I'm a Christian, but that's my truth, they say. And there are many truths and many people trying to find God. Well, that shows, that shows the fruit of your life. And the Bible declares that you're not a child of God if these things are in your life. If you're having sex with your girlfriend outside of marriage and you call yourself a Christian, you are not of God. You are showing the world that it's okay to be a Christian in sin, therefore making you a hypocrite. No matter how many church services you go to, no matter how much money you give to the preacher, no matter how many poor people you fed, you are blaspheming and, and committing adultery on God with your life. With your life. Your mouth says, I love Jesus. I know Jesus. I believe in Jesus. That's what your mouth says, but your heart and your life shows otherwise. You are drawing near to God. You are drawing near to God with your lips, but your heart is far from Him. No, turn to Him. Your heart is far from Him if you're not walking with Him, folks. And that's very bad news for you. That's very bad news for you, that if you're a sinner, you're gonna go into the lake of fire because you reject God. And God doesn't want that to happen to you. This is for fake Christians and sinners alike. And those that don't believe in Jesus. God does not want you to perish. He loves you in this. Not because he accepts you in your sin, in your sinful lifestyle. God doesn't love that. But he loves you in this. That Jesus Christ came to die for sinners. Does that mean everybody's forgiven? No. That doesn't mean everybody's forgiven. And that doesn't mean he loves those that are against him in the sense that he loves his children who are intimate fellowship with God. He loves you because he wants to deliver you out from under the wrath of God. Even though you're an enemy of God in sin, God loves you enough to send his only begotten son into the world to die on a cross for you. Hoping, peradventure, perhaps, not hoping, perhaps, that you might give your life to Jesus and no longer live as a sinner. Bless you. Turn to Jesus. You see, the Bible tells us when we're cursed that we should bless those that curse us. So every time somebody gives me a curse word, I give them a bless you. Turn to Jesus. You see, I don't want you to die in your sin. And neither does God. Neither does God. God doesn't want you to die in your sin. Why do you want to die in your sin? Is it that fun? Is that fun to have sex outside of marriage? Is that fun to get drunk? Is it that fun to get high? Is that fun to waste your life on the pleasures of this life? You're not gonna be able to take your money with you. You're not gonna be able to take your pleasures with you when you die. The only thing that's gonna matter while you laugh it up and act like this is a joke, while you walk by the preaching of God's word, being apathetic, the only thing that's gonna matter for you it's what you did with Jesus Christ. What are you doing with the sacrifice of Jesus Christ today? The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father. But it is of the world, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And so all these sporting events I go to, whether it's basketball, I live, in, I live near Atlanta, Georgia. We're up here from Georgia, and there's a lot of sporting events in, in Atlanta, Georgia. You got the Georgia Bulldogs, the Atlanta Falcons, you got the Atlanta Hawks, you got the MLS Atlanta United, and we got all kind of people that go to these games, and they buy all, they spend all this money just to put a man's last name on your back to cheer and praise these sports idols Folks, I used to be a sports idolater myself. I would wear Michael Jordan's name on my back. I would put Michael Jordan's picture all over my wall. I would be emotionally unstable if the Chicago Bulls won or lost. I'd, be, I'd feel like a sense of sadness if the Chicago Bulls lost. 
We're talking about a basketball team that doesn't pay my bills, could really care less about me, but they only want your money. And I was in the sports idolatry. And when the, when the Chicago Bulls win a championship, I'd be elated, I'd be praising Michael Jordan, I'd be looking up to him like an idol, like a lot of you do with these sports stars today. But guess what? That's called idolatry. That's called idolatry. When you praise a man, when you look up to a man more than God, when you spend your money on things of the world more than God, this is idolatry. I was in idolatry at one point until Jesus saved me, until Jesus showed me what the world was like, cleansed me from my sin, and I look back at my life and I'm like, what in the world was I thinking, idolizing this adulterous, proud, gambler, wicked man? What was I doing? What, because he's so good at basketball? Because these guys are so good at hockey? Or somebody's really good at gymnastics, or baseball, or football, or, or soccer? People just praise them. They praise them. These men don't care about you. They'll take your money, though. But they'll take your praises, though. Folks, your money and your praises belong to God, and God alone. I'm not saying it's a sin to kick around a, a soccer ball or shoot a couple hoops in the backyard and throw a football around. But it crosses the line when it goes into idolatry, where it becomes your life. It becomes emotional for you. You spend all your money to put a man's last name on your back, a man who doesn't even know you. A man who doesn't even really probably care about you, but he'll take your money. A company and a business that doesn't know you or care about you, they'll take your money though. It crosses the line when you go into these emotional things and worshiping, and people won't say, oh yes, I worship these sports idols. Oh yes, I worship these sports teams. They won't say that, but I guarantee you, in Atlanta, we got, you got Trey Young on the Atlanta Hawks, where we are. And I guarantee you, I tell people, I guarantee you if, if, Trey, if Trey Young had a step back three and the final three seconds, two seconds, that place is going to go crazy with praise for Trey Young. I don't know these guys here. I don't, I'm not really from Ohio, so I don't know the sports in Ohio. But I guarantee you if one of your sports idols in here makes a goal at the last seconds for the win, the whole place is going to erupt in praise. Praise. They're going to erupt in praise for a hockey game, for a man. They're gonna lift him up like he's, like he's above a man, like he's a god. You see, it's just a hockey game. It's just a basketball game, it's just a football game. It matters not. In a hundred years, it's not gonna matter who wins this game. In a hundred years, it's not gonna matter who wins the Stanley Cup, or who wins the Super Bowl, or who wins the NBA Finals, or who wins the World Series. It's, or who wins the MLS Cup. It's not gonna matter in a hundred years who won that. But it is gonna matter. It is gonna matter in a hundred years what you did with Jesus. You see, he won the ultimate battle. He won the ultimate quote unquote game, if you wanna call it a game, when it's really not a game. He won the ultimate battle, the battle over sin, the battle over death, the battle over the devil. The battle over your flesh. Jesus Christ won that battle on the cross. He won that battle on the cross. What are you doing with the victory that Jesus accomplished for you? For the sinner, it's hopeful if they hate their sin, they realize they're on the way to hell because that's the logical conclusion of a person who loves the world, who loves sin they're going to end up in the lake of fire because in this life, they didn't want God. So what makes you think they're gonna want God in eternity? They're not. They're not gonna want God in eternity if they don't want God now through Jesus Christ. But no, people have chosen their sin and their sinful lifestyle over Jesus Christ. Oh folks, John chapter three. I preach out of it almost every time I'm out because it's so powerful that, you know, people read John chapter 316 and they act like Jesus just died for everybody and that everybody's just gonna go to the kingdom of God because a loving God wouldn't throw anybody to the lake of fire, which isn't true. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus preached more on hell and condemnation more than anybody in the Bible. In fact, he said hell is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth where the flame never dies and the worm never dies. It's a place of eternal torment 
and it's the place in the abode, it's the place where hell is going to be, the lake of fire is the place where hell is going to be thrown into, where the devil is going to be thrown into, where the demons are going to be thrown into, and where those in this life that forsook God, that chose to follow their own sin instead of Jesus Christ. It says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And the Son of Man was lifted up over 2,000 years ago in, in, outside of Jerusalem. I've been there. I've been to Jerusalem. I've seen, his, I've seen where Jesus walked. These places are real places in the Bible. I've been to Capernaum. I've been to different places in Israel and seen where this was and where it potentially was that Jesus was lifted up on a cross. And outside of Jerusalem's walls, Jesus was lifted up on a cross, a sinless, perfect man who was God manifested in the flesh. God came down as a man and took on the form of a flesh, of, of the seed of Abraham, of the flesh of a man, so he could experience what it's like to feel what man feels, the temptations, the pain, the suffering. Christ felt all that. And yet, he was without sin in thought, word, and deed, from the womb to his resurrection and for eternity. From eternity past to eternity future, if there is even a past in eternity, because eternity is no time scale. Christ Jesus has never sinned, not once. And so he came, he gave up his heavenly throne in the kingdom of God. He is worshiped and praised by mighty and holy angels in perfect peace and no pain, a perfect peace. And he chose to give all that up. He chose to give all that up to come down to the earth for a season so that he could die on a cross for sinners, for enemies of his. As the Bible says, for adventure, maybe for a good man, one might die, some might die. But God displayed his love, and I'm misquoting this, but this is the gist of it. God revealed his love in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And he didn't die for you so you could continue being a sinner. That's not why he died for you. He died for you so that his blood would be an atonement for your sin, so you no longer have to suffer the penalty for sin, that his blood would cleanse you of your sin, so you would no longer be a sinner, and God would account you as righteous, and so that he could give you the Holy Spirit to enter into the presence of Almighty God. Because nobody can come into the presence of Almighty God unless you've been cleansed of your sin. You cannot be a sinner and come into the presence of God. He's too holy. He's perfect. God the Father will not even look at sin. He will not even look at a sinner. That's why when he came down upon Sinai, he was shrouded in a cloud. He cannot look upon sin. God the Father cannot. But through Jesus Christ, we can come to the Father. And Jesus Christ, our high priest, does the work of a high priest in cleansing and atoning, atoning and cleansing us of our sin. Yes, he is. He is Lord, and he is returning one day. And he will exercise his lordship in the earth. He is Lord, and he is king. And one day, Christ is going to return and, 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 and exercise his lordship and take back that which the devil has t tried to take, which wicked men and women have tried to take. This is not your earth, this is the Lord's earth. And one time, one day, he's gonna come back, and only his children, only those that have, have given up their lives, their sinful lives, and done what Jesus said to do by his grace through faith, repented of their sin, and given themselves to him by faith, believing on him, only those that die in that condition, that die in this body in that condition, will be with him in that kingdom forever. Turn to Jesus, man. You're so angry. Why are you so angry? Why are you so, okay, so if God doesn't exist, why are you so angry and convicted? Yeah, you're so tough now, aren't you? You're so tough, but guess what? It won't be mocking God on that day, sinner. You won't be so tough in your little flesh that day. You'll be cowering before God as a little child, begging him to save you. But by then it's too late. By then it's too late. You gotta humble yourself now as a little child. Jesus said as a little child, come unto me like one of these little children or you won't even see the kingdom of God. You gotta get rid of your pride. You gotta humble yourself, put your pride down. Everything you think you know about God and religion and about politics and about America, all these things, what, what, go help him. 
What are you pointing at me for? Go help him. Don't be a hypocrite, sir. Don't point at the homeless man. Go help him. Go help him. Don't tell me to help him. You go help him. You see? And that's what people think going, being a Christian is, is that we just give money to every poor person that ever existed. No, Jesus said, the poor have you always. When God leads me to give to somebody, I give to them. We don't glorify ourselves and our good works. No, we glorify Jesus Christ. And we preach the gospel. We preach the gospel, which is foolishness to the world. I've been homeless before myself. I've been homeless, I've slept in my car, I've been in homeless shelters with children. I've been in motels and I never once saw God fail me. A lot of the times, homeless people are homeless because of sin, especially in America. Some homeless people, and I've seen this myself, some homeless people are in sin and that's why they're homeless, because they've wasted their money on alcohol, because they won't get a job. They're not disabled. They're not old, they just don't want to work. And the Bible says, if you don't work, you don't eat. Now we go through hard times sometimes, and God understands that. And he knows the difference between a lazy person and a person who's not lazy and just going through hard times. And I went through hard times, and God always provided for me in some way, form, or fashion. Whether it was by some miraculous donation of food or money, or by getting a job by, God, by God's grace, He's always provided for me. And so no, I don't give to every homeless person I see because some homeless people I've seen will use it on drugs. And so me giving them money just because they say they're homeless is actually hurting them because they're gonna use that money, not all homeless people, not all people that need it, but there are some that will use it on alcohol and drugs and waste it. There are some that you are perpetrating Perp uh, perpetuating their laziness by giving them money. And so I'm not saying don't give to the poor. I'm just saying give with discernment. Make sure you're giving as God leads. And that is not the measure of if you're going to heaven or hell. Christ Jesus is the only way. Christ Jesus is the only way, truth, and the life. You, you want to preach, bro? Feel it okay? You want to? So turn to Jesus. Yes. All my friends, test, 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 test. My friends, do you know Jesus? Because a lot of people in America, they claim to know Jesus Christ, but yet their hearts are far from them. You know, claiming to be a Christian, a lot of people, a lot of atheists are driven away from Christianity because of true hypocrites in the church. It's because of people that claim to know Jesus Christ, yet their hearts are far from them. They go to church, they look so holy on Sunday, but then they look like the rest of the world, Monday through Saturday. My friends, it's not an on and off switch with, with Jesus Christ. You're either all for Jesus or all for this world. Jesus says you can't serve two masters. You'll either hate the one and cling to the other, or despise the one and love the other. You cannot serve God in this world. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't have, you can't put your trust in earthly riches and your trust in God at the same time. You can't serve yourself and serve God at the same time. You have to choose one. Have you chosen one? Have you chosen to serve God with all your heart or to serve yourself with all your heart? Oh, my friends, it's very grieving to be a Christian here in America where there's so many wheat and tares among each other. There's so much tares among the wheat. There's so many false Christians among the true Christians. And it, it is, the grieving part is that these tares, these false Christians, they believe that they're saved and they continue to spread their false teachings, and on top of that, they also make false converts and even confuse the world, what a true Christian is like, because Jesus, he came to set us free from sin, he didn't come to set you free from one particular sin, he came to set you free from all your sin, he said to the adulterous woman in John 8, 11, 
to go and sin no more. He didn't say to go and sin a little bit less over time. He told the adulterous woman to go and sin no more. But my friends, it's by God's grace, as we see in Titus 2.11, Titus I two first showed up, we went down there to preach, it was a massive hunt. That leads us, that teaches us to live righteously. Like, well, and I, I don't want to do that because yeah, they're preaching, and their, their stuff is so much weaker. And you can only do that in the strength of so Christ. So we went ahead and came up here because it's You can't do that back. apart from Christ, my friend. Were they preaching the truth? From what we heard, yeah, they were preaching hellfire, but his, his oh, he, he was using saying. like an acre or something. Oh, okay, it was yeah. so weak, I could barely, Yeah. I didn't hear a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I am the lost one, weak and condemned, the one that God wants you to talk to. But you scared you to fin And I am the outcast Rejected inside Who oh, I'm looking for answers But I'm blinded by pride To so come out and preach Preach unto me And tell me the secret to eternity be bold and speak and reach out to me no i can't save myself but i want to be free and there's something inside you i need well there's something deep down inside you i need